So we all want to know what's a better feeling, hitting a home run or hitting a bomb with your driver? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> it depends on who's pitching that I hit the home run on, and it depends on who's watching on the golf course. Okay, so Nolan Ryan is pitching, and you get the home run on The him. home run. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> What's up, guys, and welcome to another episode of Par 3 Podcast. Our next guest is a future Hall of Famer, MLB baseball overall legend, Gary Sheffield. He's uh, just a G, and I didn't even know he played golf until recently. Um, but I met him at uh, Mulligan's in Miami at uh, the Malbin event, and a uh, really cool dude, man. You excited for this dude or what? Yeah, it was great. That tournament in Miami, he took uh, Luke and Ryan, who worked for us, he took them down to uh, to the Grove. He took them to the Grove, and uh, and it was the, him and his homie versus Luke and Ryan, and they're at the Grove. You know, they're all nervous, this and that. And Luke went out there, and he's Luke. Lo Luke's good. He looks good at golf for sure, right? So they were calling him the pro from the jump, and they start off playing a little bit of money. He's, oh, look at the pro. Look at the pro. And I think Luke shot like 38 on the front two over no big deal everything's going good they were up like a hundred or so playing you know 20 30 a hole and then on the back they started getting on them you know oh damn you playing great bro you playing great can you keep it up can, can the kid keep it up they're calling it the kid and then they start pressing and pressing and they ended up popping them for like four or five hundred <laughs> and just clean their clock and then the next day he came to uh to Miami, but yeah, he's a great. He's great. His wife, he got a, he got a couple kids. They all play like baseball too, I think, or something. Yeah. You know, I, I did a uh, I did a collaboration with Tops. I've had several collaborations, and like you know, we pick out. You just have a ton of artists you can think of, and you know, Gary Sheffield was one of the people. I was like, oh damn, okay, he's a legend. You know, obviously played for the Dodgers, played for a few teams, and so I didn't recognize him. But he said, "What's up to Jr.?" When we walked up. Is where I see the two, you know, I see the XX three, you know, the Grove logo. Ro yeah, the Grove logo, the Roman numerals, and I'm thinking twice about whatever. At the end, when when uh, we were all hitting the pitching range, it was kind of nighttime. He's like, "Hey man, can we get a can we get a pick together?" And I was like, "The fuck?" I was yeah, like, what do you mean? He goes, he goes, he goes, "My son's a fa big fan of yours," and I was like, "All right, cool." Then I didn't really put two and two together, and then I know he played golf, you know what I'm saying? But he was he was super chill, and that was like a a weird experience, you know, like he's. Like, you know, he's he's just he's real cool. But he, I mean, he looked at Jr. like they was best friends, man. What's up? Like, you know him like that? Uh, no, man. It's like for me, having that mutual respect with with guys who've you know come before you, and regardless of whatever sport it is, um, I've always had a mutual respect, and they've always given me respect as well. Um, the guy, somebody like Gary Sheffield, for like for me, I grew I grew up playing baseball, so I, I used to watch him and on the Braves and Chipper Jones and you know and the three headed monster on the on the mound that they had, and I I vividly remember him playing and you know to spend twenty one years in the majors, future Hall of Famer, and what five hundred home runs, I mean, <laughs> oh, just. Have you played golf with him? I haven't played golf with him. How many home runs did he have? Over 500. <laughs> yeah, that's like, insane. That's not like... <laughs> yeah, 500. <laughs> no big deal. No big deal, MVP, right? Just, Do you know if he played pack. during Dave Justice during that time? Or yeah. Was that? yeah. Yeah, they were around the same era. They definitely played against each other. I'm not sure if they played on the same team, though. Damn, and, man. And he's like, uh, like he's like, even at the, in Miami, like the, you know, after the golf, whatever, there's all those people. There's some people are, you know, hanging out, doing this, that, and the other. But like, he was on the range hitting balls, those glow balls he was hitting for like us. Like, I mean, hours he's just hitting balls. Yeah. It's like, what else do you want to do? He's just out there. I was so what did his swing look like? It's good. I, he, he's hitting like big high draws with the driver. I was trying to time him, you know, when you one, two, three, and you both swing at the same time and hit the glow balls. I was a little more jumpy than him, you know. I couldn't <laughs> time it right. 
I mean, you know, the baseball swing has got more of a nat. It's like that natural baseball swing. It's like there's a lot of similarities. I know that's what RDB tries to tell me. This is our first baseball player, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. I got a question. Do y'all th- who do you guys think translates better to the golf swing, hockey players or baseball players? I would figure baseball. I mean, I want to ask him, like. You know, like, I don't look at the ball when I hit it, right? I just turn and look where I want it to go. Like, if you were shooting a hoop, you don't look at the hand. Right. You just look at the rim, right? Or a net or something, backboard, yeah. whatever. You look where you want it to hit. Or if I throw, like, oh, you know, if you said throw me a lighter, I'm going to just look at you, and then somehow I know how to do it. So I try to play golf the same way. But I can't imagine baseball, when someone throws the ball fast, that you could actually, you know, like, the instructors will say, like, keep your eye on the ball. Like, I don't know how you could do it with the ball <laughs> because it must just be a blur. Right. A few foot before it gets to you, you got to just Well, if it's guess. coming 101 miles per hour and there's some of, them, you know, some of these guys are throwing that kind of heat, the hand-eye coordination is literally impeccable. It, it is. And I didn't play baseball. Played softball, but I never played baseball. He played it. But uh, I just played that uh, Justin Turner that played the Dodgers charity event at Sherwood this past week. These guys is out here and I was like, why are you using a three wood? And he goes, it's 306 yard hole. Yeah. I'm like, bro, take your driver out there and drive the green. He's like, I'm going to take my three wood out and do it. And then they start, you know, I'm proud of JR, bro. Like, I'm very proud of like knowing him. I'm very proud of like, I'll brag on my homies. I, I'm sorry. I, sometimes I'll put you out there and like say, like I said it before, we're at Turnberry and we're on a par five. We're like 280, 270 to the hole. He took out his three wood and it went to, it went past the green off the deck. Like, forget a T. It was just the, I was like, God damn. <laughs> so, you know, he hits, he hits his, he hits his, you know, three wood off the T. Probably goes somewhere around there. And he goes, you ever seen anybody hit something like that before? And I was like, yeah, my partner, JR, man, he do it off the deck. Not even off the T. <laughs> and, you know, Paul's like, he's like. He's like, where is he? Let me he see. He goes, JR who? I said, JR Smith, you know, world champion basketball player and he goes okay and I was like well you asked me a question bro don't get mad now that I said something I was like I'm not gonna make up nothing but it was funny because you know he's like all right and I thought about it because he's talking about a hockey swing Wayne Gretzky was there that day because he is a member at Sherwood so he pulled up and so that was a question I asked because Ron said that a hockey swing is also very natural in certain ways but Wayne's like a 11 or they say he's a 9 10 whatever these baseball players when they start really getting into it because of the hand-eye coordination and, the, and the, the mechanics of the swing, a lot of them said they they pick up the golf swing really easily as far as the driver and all the woods. I think it's the same where you like have to completely turn your entire body and like abandon and leave your arms behind you. And you can't like arm a home run. You got to hit it with your hips and your legs. I mean, and- did you ever see Mike Trout, Mike, Mike Trout at, at Top <clears throat> Golf? He doesn't have like the straight elbow. He just, you know, just think of a swing. And he just went out there. It was not edited. He went out there. And he got 193 miles per hour ball speed. That's how fast his ball was going. He smacked the shit out of it. I mean, it, it went out of the state. It went out of the top golf. Like it was crazy. And you know, he's obviously one of the best baseball players there is in the world. But there has to be something. I mean, I guess we'll ask Gary when he gets here. When Let's he gets do it. Here. Let's get Gary on. Everybody. Let's get him on. Let's get him on. Gary Sheffield. But sir, the legend, like for me, is it's, it's heavy because I played baseball growing up and I remember those days watching you and watching your teams and like really, you know, going to the, having the, going in the dugout, having my swag going, That's thinking right. I was like one of y'all. That's right. So to have you sitting right next to me right now is really surreal and I really appreciate you coming on. Obviously, does you know Ben, Steve, let's get into it. Yes, yeah, sir. Let's go, man. So with the, the first thing coming in, the, the, you guys just played a tournament and we've obviously met your son and he said that, uh, I asked him, does he give you stroke? <laughs> Man, uh, you insult me right it. now to just start the show. <laughs> <laughs> Shots fired. Hey, man. Hey, Your hey, wife you should, said you, you, you he will this. never give him strokes. <laughs> never. Hey, listen here, man. Listen. <laughs> He's a good golfer. And, um, you know, we was playing a skins game. And, you know, like I said, we, we play one-on-one. We done play with groups. And I won most of the games, well, all of the games. <laughs> and then uh, we playing skins for money. So I was like, I'm going to make sure we win the money. 
So if I got a chance to win the skin, if I don't win it, I'm going to make sure he wins it. Yeah, exactly. Makes sense. So he count that as a win. <laughs> <laughs> That's dope that y'all have that bond, man. Y'all go out there and compete against each other, man. That's dope. I wish me and my pops could still do that. Yeah. Um, how long you been playing? I've been playing uh, probably, we're talking about nine years now. Really? Yeah. I, I didn't play when I, when I was uh, playing baseball. I thought it would mess up my swing. But as I've gotten to the point I'm at now and playing better, I, I think it would have helped my swing. To be honest with you, wow. now I'm starting to understand inside the ball, turning that right hand over to you know based on the wind, leaving the club open. Hold up. You're not about to sit here and tell me you you understanding that after yeah. you hit 500 home runs, bro. <laughs> <laughs> over 500. Now you get like this. Yeah. That's wild. Well, I tried to play one time in 1992 with Fred McGriff. We was mm. I just got traded over to the Padres. He took me out on the golf course. Actually, we stayed in on a golf course. And um, the first hole, I had a driver in my hand, and I hit the ground so hard, my shaft went flying down the fairway. He kicked me off the course. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't been back since. <laughs> Don't even worry about it, buddy. Don't yeah. even worry about it. Oh, man. That was it. Could you tell us your first, like your earliest golf memory? What was that? Earliest golf memory, um, Michael Jordan came to me and said, Crazy man, you need to start playing golf. And I was like, man, I ain't playing no golf. That's five hours. You know, I ain't got five hours to get nobody. Went out there the first time. I went out and shot an 80. Wow. At a at Carrollwood Golf Course in Tampa, Florida. Wow. I went out there, shot an 80. I don't know how I did it. I was all over the place. Dang. You know, you know, and and I was always in the, under trees and in, in the woods, you know, always trying to come out of trouble. And then for some reason that helped my game because I was recovering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, and then I, as I got more into golf, I listened to Tiger Woods' dad, and that's how he taught Tiger. He always put him in trouble, mm. made him go into the trees, woods, under trees, hit balls, and tough scenarios. And then eventually you, we, we know the story. Yeah. I mean, getting out of trouble is probably the most important thing, right? You, yeah. you know, like, all right, well, I made a bad shot. You got to have a short-term memory. Okay, let me get, what do I got, to, what do I got to do to get out of this bad situation? Yeah. And get into a good one, right? Well, well first, you got to play with good players. I play with Ray Allen. Right. I play with guys like that. And, um, you know, it was me, Ray Allen, uh, Ken Griffey Jr., and Andrew Jones. And I hit a bad shot, and I felt like I let him down. And he said, don't worry about it. They're hitting bad shots, too. He said, just play your game. Don't worry about what they're doing. And so I just started thinking about, you know, things that the way good golfers think. Because you, when you're, you're not a good golfer, you think you got to hit a great shot every time. And he told me just, you know, when you got a pin that says 100 yards and is uphill, you know, hit the ball to the pin. Right. Not hit the ball 100 yards. And so I started thinking about all the small things you have to think about, like as a baseball player that most baseball players don't think about. It's little small things you have to think about to overcome that obstacle. Mm. Hold on, man. Is, is, Ken, <laughs> is Ken Griffey Jr. any good? He's very good. Wow, <laughs> he's man. very good. I mean, I think he's a scratch golfer. Damn, like that? Yes, I like that. I seen him drop seven birdies in a row. <laughs> like it was nothing. Seven birdies? In a yes. row. It, 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 the kid? In the yes. Road. <laughs> we was playing Shadow Creek. Me, Ray Allen, Andrew Jones, Ken Griffey. Me and Ray Allen sitting in the middle of the fairway. Griffey was in trouble on, to the right in the bunker. I said, we got them. Griffey left it three feet out of the bunker. <laughs> I said, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Your hands full. Well, oh, before you boy. walked in here, we had a little bit of discussion, debate about a baseball swing helping the game. You kind of said that, right? Yeah. But like in general for anyone playing college, high school, basketball, um, pro, baseball, do you think the, the, the swing is somewhat similar, as, at least for like a driver? Do you think that that like, you know, a, a baseball player who's never played golf before could probably have a slight advantage because of, you know, the, the, the baseball swing? Only mechanics? the lower half. Only the lower half. So the body what? movement, right? The hips. Yes, the, the hips. 
and and stand in the ground and not move your feet. That's the part what when I'm teaching hitting, I'm always telling the kids to keep stay close to the ground. Do not move your feet. Don't come out of the ground because you're going to come up on your swing. And what I've learned is that the inside out swing in golf, you know, sometimes you want to yeah. cut cross it to, yeah. to fade it. Yeah. Sometimes you want to stay through it on the inside and draw it. Those are two different swings, but it's the same motion. Mm -hmm. You got to stay connected to the ground. Yeah. And that's the difference. I might need you to be my swing coach. <laughs> <laughs> I need that. <laughs> He's dropping jewels over here. <clears throat> What's your lowest round? My lowest round was a 75. 75. 75. Where? Carrollwood. Oh, okay. Damn. That's my home course in Tampa. Okay. Yeah. I still How many days a week? 80 the first time? Yeah, 80, 80, 80, 80 the 80? first time is... is... Do you, what, what tees are you playing? What did you shoot the next time? I don't play up. <laughs> I always play at the tips. Oh, wow. You know, yeah. like my friends, they want to move me up because it makes you pull out all your clubs. Mm -hmm. And they want to move me up. They, they hit three irons, you know, three woods, things like that. Yeah. And, you know, when I move back, I can bomb the driver. You're you know, I can, you know, and every yeah, grain. and I'm there. You go, and we don't yeah. like that, right? They, they don't eight, like that. They yeah. got seven, six irons. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so now when I move up. You know, I can't. I had to put the driver up because mm -hmm. now yeah. I can. I'm adding trouble. The landing area is, is, you're, smaller. is getting smaller. Getting smaller. Yeah. Yes. And what about at the Grove? The landing area is is. I've heard things there that the landing area is built for certain distance of a drive, and if you're a long hitter or a certain person, that applies to the pros. It, it not hurts. us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's exactly I mean, it. they got us a one tee up, but that's actually like too much. For most golfers, mm -hmm. but if if they moved us back, I mean, there's some holes you got no chance. None. And so for pros, I think Dustin Johnson. That when I first went out to grow, when I was there early, they had a, a par five, and it was you could hit a ball down the middle of the fairway, and it was uphill, and you couldn't see the uh, the pin. And so Dustin didn't like that hole, so Michael dug it up and flattened it out. <laughs> so it's like. For those guys, they want certain holes to fit the eye. Mm -hmm. As Dustin Johnson is a fade guy, Michael's a fade guy, and so that that he he goes low there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is that three or, or eight? I think that's five. That's five. That's five. Yep. That's five. I mean, what 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 do you average a drive with your driver? Like, what, what what's the distance? What are I talking average about? because I want to score. I average about two eighty, two seventy, somewhere in there. That's plenty. So, um, yeah. If I want to get after it, I could turn it up a notch. Yeah, if you stepped but, on it, you get say, over 300. He, he, right? got some more, yeah. he got some but, more power in that bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But, I mean, it, I had to get over that, that you know, that little macho stuff, mm -hmm. you know. Right. I, I want to hit it farther than everybody. But the problem is when you're an athlete, and I know you experience this when you play with regular people, you know, you hit a drive, get it in the fairway at 280, or they hit it past, or just let's just say 270. They hit it three feet past you. All they talking about, I outdrove Gary Sheffield. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. all right, you know, now I've been out driving, now they hit it in the trees. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, you know, they throw my game off. So uh -huh. Now you're a long drive competition. Yeah, yeah. now we doing but that. Have you seen, you've seen how far he hits the ball, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, I, 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 again, I'm, I'm right where you at. Yeah. I'm slowing it down so I can bring it in. Yeah, you've got to you gotta hit in. the fairway. Yep. So you can score. You get on that good grass, mm -hmm. you can score. You I heard that the, the uh, Bryson DeChambeau, they said he he learned how to hit it 400 yards so he could chip it 300. Right? <laughs> yeah. So when you hit it hard, you might miss here. When you yes. chip it, you're going to miss here. So yeah, right. it's like if you have it in you where you can hit it 350, it's not a big deal just to just hit a little smooth 275 right, right. in the middle because yeah. you can pull back a lot easier than you can jump up. When you yeah. try to jump up, it's – Makes the misses all over the place. I played with him twice at Bay Hill and Valspar at Ennisbrook. When I tell you they're looking at a different golf course than we're looking at, yeah. it's like that's an understatement. We're saying, looking at the fairway, he's thinking, go over those trees. It. I got a short landing area. I got water behind it. And so... Those are the things that he's doing. He's hitting balls like I wouldn't dare hit a ball at Bay Hill over a house. 
Yeah. Somebody's just going over the house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so he's hitting balls, drawing it in over people's house. Yeah. You know, and, and we're talking about his he's chipping, like you said, he's chipping. 330, you know, 350, yes. just Three, chipping easy, it. Easy. Yeah, easy. And when you see this, like, I'm I'm watching this firsthand. And I'm like, there's no way he's generating that kind of club speed with the swing. He, I mean, like, we saw that he hit that ball over that uh, par five over that water yeah. mm-hmm. the yeah. short way. Yeah. Nobody would dare go that no. way. And that took that broke the internet when he right. did it. But yeah. you know, Bryson is, uh, he's like, they call him the scientist. Yes. Because he literally studies, you don't have to swing faster. You know, it's just the mechanic of it. He's, he starts talking about, for 20 minutes, the dimples in the ball. Yeah. And how to find a sweet spot in the ball. He talks about even that, how it's how you line up and how you mark your ball for a putt. And I'm like, dog, you're going to drive somebody crazy this way, man. It's too much to think about. You yeah. know, and like, I played with John Rom, And I said, what do you think about it? Do you keep, like... Do you do all that? And John Rahm's like, there's two ways you can play golf. You can get complicated like that. Yeah. Or you can just keep it simple. He's like, I like to keep it simple. He goes, personally, I think because I know Bryson, that makes him feel better. It like He it likes does. being crazy and technical about it. And Imagine it playing 18 holes with him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's talking the whole time, the too. The whole time. The whole time. Explaining you know, he, it. I mean, he can hit a great shot. And if the ball spins left, he, he's upset. Yeah. Or if it spins right, he's upset. He wants the ball to the the hit and just release and do exactly what he wants. Exactly what he wants. If it goes left or right, I can hear him talking to his caddy the whole time. The whole walk to the the whole walk. Just how did that happen? How did it happen? What what, what dimple did I hit? Now get behind me and watch the swing and all of that. Oh no, it's crazy. We hit three days ago when we had that shot. Did we hit the same shot? Exactly. So when I saw this firsthand. It was first at Bay Hill, and when I saw it, I was like, okay, he's a nice guy. You know, he's really a nice guy, and he wants all the information. I mean, like, the data that he has, it's, like, amazing. And then when I got a chance to play with him at Valspar and saw what he did there, it was just amazing to me. Mm. I I just caddied at the – I I caddied at the AT&T for for Schoolboy Q, and – it's amazing at how the pros, like, if you say, like, they're in the office, right? So, like, they go in the office one minute before they hit the ball, and they stay in the office until the ball lands. Yes. And then they're off it. Right. You know, so if, like, I'm down to, like, a five handicap, right? But if mm-hmm. I want to go plus five, right. I got to figure out how to do that. You know, the amount of energy they put into a shot prior to swinging, like, they're not thinking about the swing. Right. They know they're going to pure the club, but it's, like, Am I aimed appropriately? Do I have the right club? What's the wind doing? Where do I need to land so it will release and right. roll right up to the hole where I just tap in birdie? Right. You know, and we, so many of us are just, you know, gambling, playing, going fast, whatever. It's like, right. just get out and hit it. I know I'm going to hit it good, but then you hit the, you know, a six iron, perfect. Right. And it flies the green. Like, well, I should have hit a seven. And that just cost right. me a bogey. Right. And if you do that three, four times around, yeah. that's why I'm shooting four or five over instead of even or two, three under. It's not from striking. So the, the amount of, like, you know, they're doing just constantly working on what did I do yesterday? How's it going to roll out? Where do I hit it? Just so much of it. And all of them do it with the clip. And then they got the caddy calling them off. Hold on, hold on. The wind switch. Right. You're not going to hit the six. We're going seven. The wind just switch. You know, we don't have any of that stuff. So it's very hard <laughs> to go from a five to a plus five. Yeah. If you're not playing chess, you're out. We, we play checkers. They're playing chess. They're, they're well, thinking. Well, like I said, after eight holes, I was exhausted. Yeah, <laughs> just watching because, them. Yeah, because yeah. it's like, man, I've just hit the ball already. Yeah. You know, well, like, I like on, to take man. one practice swing and hit the ball. Me too. They're taking 10 minutes before they hit the next shot. Yeah. And so they, they're having to go through all of this stuff. And that's what we're talking about, you know, when we talk about, like, amateurs and pros, you know, our att- attention span is short. Mm-hmm. They can't let up. So we we think golf is not physical, but mentally, these guys is like so in tune to every shot, mm-hmm. yeah. Because it can cost you a tournament. One shot can cost totally. you a tournament. That's four or five million. Yes, mm-hmm. and it's exhausting. They're afterwards, they're exhausted because of thinking so hard. Yes, for five six hours on the tour, you right. know, it's just it's a long day of waiting. Yeah, and four not, days in a row. 
doing that five six hours four days. <laughs> Very <in a> difficult <laughs> to do. <laughs> That's that that is hard. That's yes. hard. That's hard. And when Tiger decided he couldn't walk those hills four days in a row, that tells you all you need to know. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. I was just thinking, like, you you hit over 500 home runs in your career, right? Mm-hmm. But you love golf. Yes. So we all want to know, what's a better feeling? Hitting a home <laughs> run or hitting a bomb with your driver? Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> it depends on who's pitching that I hit the home run on. And it depends on who's watching on the golf course. Okay, so Nolan Ryan is pitching, and you get the home run on The him. home run. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> the home run. Right. That, and I was going to say, you know, yes. you got everyone at a pro-am, you on TV, and you just knocked the driver like 330. Yeah. You know, the home run, right? The home run. Okay. Now that you said Nolan Ryan. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, that's like you brought the, up the kid. Yeah. And I saw an interview he did a long time ago on David Letterman. Yeah. I didn't know his first at bat was against Nolan Ryan. I'm like, yeah. imagine that's your first at bat against that mean son of a bitch. No, like, can you imagine it? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> so when we we when we're standing in there, imagine what's going through our mind. Nolan Ryan throwing a hundred. That <sighs> they say these guys throwing ninety seven hundred miles an hour. No, he was throwing 100. <laughs> he was throwing 105 or 106 if these guys throwing what they say they're throwing. I, yeah, I, throwing I, I, done been to game. I done been to games, you know, and, and I see guys that they say throw 100. If they're throwing 100, Nolan Ryan's throwing 106. Mm. Easy. Guaranteed. You know when you sit behind home plate, the nicest seat you can get home plate, plate, and you hear the whiz. You never really hear it on TV, but you really hear like you could hear it sometimes when it's Nolan. Right. When when it's Nolan, towards the later years, mm-hmm. you hear the like it's the nastiest sound you ever yeah. imagined. Is it even louder when you're at bat? Yes, <laughs> it's like an aspirin coming at you. <laughs> an aspirin with pine tar <laughs> and rosalind on his hand, oh all in God. one. Now hit that. <laughs> And I hit that, and I might hit you in the head. Right. That's right. <laughs> That's the part. And I might hit you in the head. That's the thing people re- don't, like, I, f- I think people fail to realize about Nola Ryan. Like, yes, he was an amazing pitcher, like strikeouts and games and all of that. But he was an intimidating person, like, yeah. like to step in that batter's box. If you yeah. thought you was about to, like, go out there and show off, he going to let you know on the first pitch, this is not going to be that today. This is what he does before the game starts. He will walk. I was in I was in Milwaukee. We had Dave Parker, Don Baylor. Don, Don Baylor was the hitting coach. Dave Parker just got traded over to our team. They was basically babysitting me. And so so I can have a good year. Nolan Ryan is the first pitcher that I face. Oh coming man. in. He walks down third base line, picks up some grass. Throws it down on the ground. Look at our dugout. Walks to the first base side. Picks up grass. Throws it down. Look at our dugout. I hear Dave Parker cursing him out, going off, everybody going crazy. I say, what is he doing? He said, don't bunt, kid. <laughs> That's all he told me. He said, don't bunt. And he was, going, he was going to drill you. So that game, first pitch he threw me, I hit it, foul home run. The next pitch was the back of my head. I dove forward. I thought I was dead. (laughs) Right? So I get up, brush myself off. My dugout is going crazy, calling all kinds of names. The next pitch he throws me, I hit a ball over our dugout, like top, top row. The next pitch under my chin, I dove backwards. I'm looking at I'm looking up at the sky. I'm thinking I'm already in heaven. I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I like I'm already dead. <laughs> so so the next so the next pitch he throws me a curveball. I hit it off the wall, on top of the wall, and I'm and I'm running fast as I could. And I slid to second base and I got up and I was getting ready to pump my fist and he was standing from me to you <laughs> and I put my head back down. <laughs> <laughs> I put my head down. I was like, oh boy, I was I was scared to death. And by the way, I ain't getting no more hits that day. <laughs> that was it. That was it. That's dope, man. <laughs> That's amazing. He, he, brought, he brought something up, but it made me think of that because like in basketball, obviously, you know, we reaction, I catch and shoot or running off screens or something. But for like I, I look at I look at you and, and a lot of other, you know, great hitters, y'all had that almost that one 
minute before you go into the office, before you step into that batter's box, you get whatever mm -hmm. your routine is, fix yep. your gloves, and then you're like, all right, it's go time. Like, what is that, what's that preparation like for you in your, in your head mentally? Well, as as you know and I know that before a game, you don't even know what's going to happen. Right. Right? So it's like all we can depend on is our preparation. So I'm prepared for anything. So it ain't about what's going to happen. It's about how I'm going to attack it. So what I do, my game starts on my drive to the park. Mm. I done process success already before I even get to the game. So I go through my routine. Once the game starts, my eyes never come off that pitcher because I want to see every move he makes. If he's tipping pitches, if he's showing something, anything he does, I'm watching. So I got two hitters before I hit mm. so I can gauge – you know, what he's going to do and what his pattern is. So by the time I get on deck, I'm already in the batter's box hitting because now that's my at bat on, on deck. So now if Jeter, when I, let's just say New York, Jeter used to hit first. He was a first pitch swinger. You know, the, the first thing he sees is hacking. So you don't really get to get a good read. But most times, you know, they'll get, by, you know, a couple of pitches in there. You'll see his breaking ball. You'll see his slider, see his fastball. That tells me what I already want to hit. So I already know what I want to hit when I walk in up to the plate. So I say, okay, now, if he throws that breaking ball, that's a home run for me. So he's not going to throw me that. He's going to give me the slider fastball. So I make every pitcher a two-pitch pitcher. Mm. And so I go off of that. So now you're not going to blow your fastball by me. You have to locate that slider to get me out. So that's my process going in the box. And when I step in there, I already have a game plan. Amazing. Man. You know, I obviously have no idea about hitting the baseball with the ball, moving that fast. But with golf, I I don't, I purposely don't look at the ball. I go up slow. And then when I feel like it's time to stop going backwards and start going forward, I just turn and look where I want it to go. And I leave my arms and let them fall. And, you know, if you turn like this and you turn back, there's a good chance I'll hit it in the middle. Mm -hmm. But with pitching, the ball's coming so fast, there's no way you could keep your eye on the ball to some degree. Why you say that? Well, I'm asking, <laughs> don't you have to guess a little bit? There's no guessing. There's no. It's 100% tune no. in, eyes, see it. My hit. head don't move. Head staring right at mm. it. Don't move. That's insane. See, like, see, here's the thing. Like what you're saying, a ball is staying still. You know that. Yeah. When I first started playing golf, I look at my club to make sure it's on plane. Yeah. And then I pick the ball up because I can do that because I'm a baseball player. Yeah. So, but that wasn't helping my swing. So what I had to do is I wanted to keep my eye on where I wanted to, you know, my my shaft to hit, you know, that bounce on the club. So I would just focus on that part. And so when I go back, wherever it goes it goes but my eyes is not coming off that spot yeah. i want to make contact with it's the same in baseball if a pitcher is pitching everybody has different deliveries and i always tell kids stop looking at the movement of the leg kick the, the you know all this movement they have to throw you off that's all deception yeah everybody has to get to the same position to throw the ball whether it's here up here or on top all you got to do is is when he has his, glove, his hand in his glove, when he goes back, he has to take the ball out. So he's telling you what he's going to throw. All you got to do is just look at the wrist. Mm, and once you look at the wrist and the location where he's throwing the ball from, he's telling you everything. And then you know which one he's throwing and you can move forward. Right. Mm. And so don't move the head and you hit to a box. Don't hit to like, you got 65,000 people out there. And if you're looking at 65,000 people and you're trying to pick up this baseball, it's almost impossible. I, I eliminate the people and I put them in a box. If you come in this box, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> and that's with, it. With all that, it, 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 it sounds like very, you know, it's like obviously you shot 80 the first time you played. The yes. ball's not even moving. Right. right. Sitting on the tee. <laughs> yes. That sounds yes. a lot easier than right. this year you're talking about, right? right? Yes, yeah, that's exactly right. But I, you know, I, I took my wife and 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 kids out to uh, the range, and I just hit balls after balls after balls. That's how I learned how to play golf. I didn't get no instructor. The one instructor I had is when I had a house in Bahamas. 
I went out there and tried to instruct her, and I'll hit a good shot, and he'll find something wrong. You move your head, or this was wrong. I was like, man, I had three arm surgeries on each shoulder. How the hell am my arm going to stay straight? <laughs> it's not going to happen. You know, no. I'm, just, I'm, I'm just using what I got. So when you had three arm surgeries on the right, three arm, you know, sur- arm surgeries on the left, how you gonna how you gonna do this? I can't have a, a what like a Ricky Fowler. Oh yeah, those little small guys get hit the ball three hundred yards. Yep. I'm not flexible like that. Yeah. So yeah. I have to use what I got. Mm-hmm. And so embrace your swing, man. Swing your swing. Bro. Yeah, you swing your swing. And I watch my son hit Gary Junior, and he's flexible as a get. I mean, he hits the ball 340. Yeah. God. And I'm watching him hit this ball. I'm like, man, I wish I could do that. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not that flexible. Yeah. And and so I'm I'm seeing it. But, you know, when I was 29, I was flexible too, but I wasn't playing golf. Yeah, right. <laughs> I hear that. I hate to hear it, man, because yeah. people were like, oh, man, you so tall, man. You should hit the ball a mile. Like, listen, man, I'll do what I need to do to get where I need to be. That's Don't right. worry about how That's far right. my ball goes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't worry about all that. So you been hearing that out of Joey. Yeah. 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 Oh, man, you're a professional athlete. You should be hitting it to the yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> cool. <laughs> let, me, let me know how that go after I wipe you over here. Exactly. <laughs> after this, the, when the game is over, I, I start collecting. My money, right? And that's Don't what ask me for no Venmo either. I need cash, baby. <laughs> you know, the, um, the purpose of the show and why we created this show was to grow the game of golf, right? He's real big, you know, advocate for growing the game. And I think that, uh, and it happened completely organically. Mm-hmm. There was no forced, it was kind of like, yo, let's do something, JR. You know, we throw Marvin in here, three totally different perspectives, yeah, right? Got a black dude, got a white boy, got. Asian guy, right? And we've always talked about how just we love diversity and where the golf is headed, what we, we what we could do to grow it, right? And I know early on, um, you dealt with some racism in baseball, especially early in the in the in the career. Have you ever like dealt with any racism on the golf course at all? No, I mean you you deal with you know sometimes you go to certain courses and you know guys playing slow and and you know if 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 I'm playing <laughs> slow. And I see guys behind me like really striking the ball. I just let them go through. Right. You know, I can't call that racism. You can't. Nobody knows exactly, you know, exactly every time something happened. Is, right. Is it racism or not? Yeah. You know, it has to be a pattern. Right. To call it racism. Mm-hmm. So I, I play baseball. There's things that happen. I saw guys that putting up numbers that was gaudy numbers that they they should get the opportunity that I'm looking at this guy sitting here making a million dollars sitting on the bench, you know, and this guy here done won three batting titles in the minor leagues. You know, it's, you know, I don't call it racism. I, I, I ask, what is it? Why is he not here and yeah. this guy's here? So a lot of people, you know, try to jump into that racism thing. I'm not so quick to do that. Right. You know, I'm not so quick to do that. I'm, 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 I'm a guy. I give the benefit of the doubt and I have to see a pattern for me to call it that. And so we all had experienced things. So you can't just jump and say, oh, that's racist. Right. You can't do that. Mm-hmm. You got it, it has to be a pattern. That's great. That's a great way to leak. I was, I was saying 100%. like more particularly like at a country club or something, if you got treated a certain way. But no, that that's a perfect answer. Yeah. You're a legend. What a fucking it. legend. Thank you. I appreciate thank you, guys, man. man. Thank you for having me. And thanks for having me at your golf court. I mean, your golf tournament. Man. Yeah, I that appreciate was fun. that. We that was a lot of glow fun. balls. Ryan is my guy. Up. Yeah. yeah, Ryan is my guy. Oh, hold guy. on, hold on. We, we, we forgot to ask him, man. <laughs> forgot to ask him. What would be your dream foursome in golf, man? That's a good one. Now, besides Jr. Now, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, would say, um, I would say Tiger Woods. Michael Jordan and uh, Dustin Johnson. Damn, that's a fun day. That's a fun day. Fun that's night. a fun day. Fun night too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that way I can see how many bad shots I hit compared to this. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, yeah. that's right. How long have you been a member at the Grove? Since they opened. Oh wow. Yeah, since he opened. Yeah, I was one of the first ones he called. I w- I, I can't say that. I was one of the first ones. One of the early people. Yeah. Yeah, the early guys that. You know, when he first opened it, when the Super Bowl was in um, Miami. And um, he was the only one playing the course at the time. Right. And he was telling me, man, you need to join my my uh, 
club. I was like, what club? And he told me I'm building a golf course. And I said, okay, he told me where it was. And after this, uh, actually I was down in Miami at the time and I just drove down to look at it. Right. Um, they had, they didn't even have a, a, a clubhouse at the time. It was a tent. So we went in the tent, you know, looked around and he showed me the, the course and what's going to be. And, and Michael was the only one playing it at the time. And so he was cheating. Oh mm -hmm. man. So he was already cheating. So he was he was figuring it out. Yeah. So I was like, all right, man, let me think about it. I said, you know, I I gotta talk to my wife, see how many times <laughs> I'm be coming down here. And uh, you know, she was like, You ought to do it. And I was like, All right, let's I mean do it's it. exclusive as hell, you know what I mean? So it is. And now I don't have to hit up Marcus Jordan no more, you know what I'm saying? I can just hit you up and be like, yo, <laughs> I mean, what's up? Hey, man. I like I an OG, man. Let just me hit me up, guys, man. <laughs> just hit me up. Yeah. How long you been a Jordan guy though? Like I I actually like Actually, in 2004, I was at Derek Jeter's golf tournament, and Michael pulled up on me with his golf cart, and he said, man, what is it going to take to get you in Jumpman? I was like, man, what the hell are you talking about? You Michael Jordan. All you got to do is say so. <laughs> but I was just, uh, at the time, Nike had just came out with this dry fit. And I was on the, um, you know, the um, the uh, Nike store. on mm -hmm. what, what street is that? Um uh, I don't, I don't forget what street it was in, in New York. I was on the oh, whole on the Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue. Mm -hmm. I was on the whole uh, wall of Nike, mm. and I was I had the dry fit on because I was the muscular guy, and so they just came out with dry fit, and so they had paid me a lot of money to be a Nike guy exclusive, and Jordan wanted to pull me away, so I'm thinking Jordan Nike is the same. The same. So I. I said, okay, let's let's make it happen. Right. And then, and for some reason, Nike got pissed. I was wearing Jordan, and I didn't understand. Mm. Like yeah, I thought y'all was the same. Man. Yeah, yeah man. I thought y'all was the same. So I got dropped by Nike from wearing Jordan. And then over time, and then when I was my last year in the league, Jordan was like, you know, I'm gonna put you in Jordan. And mm. he, then I became a Jordan guy. And then I, all of a sudden, hit the 500 home run, and that was it. Oh, that's so uh, yeah. That's beautiful, man. Heck yeah. Okay, that's it for the show. Boxes, you know I mean? Just let me know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what man. size you wear? Uh fifteen. Oh, I can't yeah. help you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you got any eleven and a half. So <laughs> like, but no, just, Gary, for real, man. I really do appreciate you taking, you know, on such short notice, man. Thank yeah. you so much for coming on the show, man. man. It's my pleasure. Especially you know. talking about golf. Yeah. Yes, sir. We Thank all gotta you. play. Thank you. Appreciate you. Okay. We'll see you guys next week. The legend Gary. Appreciate it.